Thank you. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand for the glory of Thank you. 
the second Sunday before Lent and the special collect prayer for today. Almighty God, give us reverence for all creation and respect for every person that we may mirror your likeness in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Are the children going to Sunday school? Prayer for the children then. As Jesus took children in his arms and blessed them, so now we ask God's blessing on these children. May they learn to love all that is true and grow in wisdom and strength. Amen. So we'd like to sit and the children are going to leave us return later. And we have our first Bible reading. Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 2. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground, but a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground, the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man, there was, not a, there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this at last is the bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one is taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother, and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked, and were not ashamed. This is the word of the Lord. We stand now to sing our second hymn, Leaders, Heavenly Father, Leaders.
So hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. One day Jesus got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they put out and while they were sailing he fell asleep. A gale swept down on the lake and the boat was filling with water, and they were in danger. They went to him and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They ceased, and there was a calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed, and said to one another, Who then is this? that he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Battery. Do please be seated. And let's bow our heads to pray. Take my mouth and speak through it. Take our minds and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. Now that's the wonderful title of a book by a former boxer, Tony Bellew. Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. And I think that phrase applies to uh, life as much as it does to the boxing ring. How do we react? Where is our faith when things go wrong and life punches us in the face? Uh, Following that gospel reading where Jesus says, where is your faith? We might want to amend the title and say, what do we do when life punches us in the faith? So where is God? Where is our faith when things go wrong? That gospel reading is uh, very apt in this time of a literal stormy weather, isn't it? As well as the storm that's brewing on the borders of Ukraine and the choppy waters that the church is facing, and maybe for us personally, at the moment, life is not all plain sailing. So where is our faith when life punches us in the faith and things go wrong? Where is your faith? It's very easy for us who know this story to underappreciate the absolute terror that the disciples felt. They were very experienced fishermen. It wasn't the first storm that they had known, but they were in absolute terror. There's a hint in the Gospel readings that this storm has a supernatural element about it. It's partly the devil's work as well as the the wind pressure and the air pressure. And it's uh, almost an undoing of creation. The waters of chaos which were limited seem to be being unleashed on this tiny boat with Jesus and the disciples. So this storm seemed to be one that the the disciples felt they wouldn't escape. And so they wake Jesus up, we are perishing. In other Gospels he says, don't you care? Don't you care, Jesus, that we're about to die? We must be careful not to be glib about this storm, because Jesus stood up and sorted it out immediately, and not to be glib about the troubles that we face. There's an old Sunday school chorus which says, With Jesus in the boat, you can smile at the storm. But I don't think smiling was very much on the minds of those disciples. So what does this gospel say to us? Firstly, I think it says that God doesn't micromanage our lives. Being a Christian is an insurance policy that guarantees that illness and trouble and tragedy and distress won't come our way. But what it does say is that God is with us 
even if, like the disciples, we feel is asleep, are not doing very much to help us out. Jesus says elsewhere, in the world you will have trouble, but fear not, I have overcome the world. And you may be familiar with those lovely words of Julian of Norwich when she wrote, he did not say, you will not be troubled, you will not be laboured, you will not be disquieted, but he did say, you will not be overcome. God wants us to pay attention to these words and always be strong in faithful trust, in well-being and in woe, for he loves and delights in us. And so he wishes us to live, love him and delight in him and trust greatly in him and then all will be well. And secondly, it's, it's talking about us being together in times of difficulty. One of the early symbols of the church was Jesus in the boat with the disciples. Now that phrase, we're all in this together, has been devalued very slightly or, or, or a great deal by certain politicians. But for us as a church, that is true. We are all in this together. People who go to Tesco probably don't have much in common other than the fact that they might live locally and that's where they happen to do their shopping. But for us coming to St Michael's, we have more in common just than the fact that this is where we come on Sundays. We're meant to have a much closer relationship, bearing one another's burdens, being with each other in times of joy and in sorrow. We are God's children. And so what we have in common is that we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And brothers and sisters who are especially there for each other when the waves are starting to spill over into our boat. And thirdly, the story tells us to travel with Jesus and keep our eyes on the captain of our ship. The disciples say, who is this man? Who is he? Who is Jesus? And it's worth us asking the same question. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus to you and me? Maybe if outside the church this morning, somebody standing with a microphone, putting it under your nose and says, oh, you've been to church? Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus to you? And I wonder how we would answer. And I wonder how that answer would change over different times. Is he a friend, saviour, lord, guide, captain of your life? or many, many other uh, things you might want to say for who Jesus is for you today. And the story reminds us to have a growing relationship with Jesus, who is the captain of our ship, the church, and the captain of our lives. Many years ago, I went to a, a day course at uh, the Catholic primary school in Harbour, and they were talking about they were teaching the children, the primary school teacher, to our children, how to spend some time in silent prayer and meditation. And you might think for primary school children it's difficult, surely, to keep silent. And, and the, the, the theory was, was that uh, the chronological age worked to the minute's silence. So the six-year-olds maybe could manage six minutes of silence, and the nine-year-olds, and etc. And uh, so after break in the morning, the whole school, every class, spent their time in quiet contemplation. And at the course, somebody asked the head teacher, uh, oh, how is it going? Is it improving their behaviour? And she said, well, I'm not sure about that, but actually I'm not bothered about that. What I want this to be, I want them to get to know Jesus better. What a superb answer. That was the reason doing it, not to manipulate the behaviour, not to calm them down, but so they got to know Jesus better. And only yesterday I was reading in, uh, in the Times about uh, managing anxiety and crises, and one of the, uh, the hints about managing your anxiety crisis was to spend 10 minutes in meditation. Now we can do that not just for our health, but even more importantly, what I had teacher said to get to know Jesus better. 
the captain of our ship. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. May we get to know our Captain Jesus more and more and stay on course with him. Now in that story the disciples escape, but we know that tragically lives are lost at sea. And our news reminds us that there are many other scenarios where life is tragically cut short and people aren't uh, miraculously rescued. Paul reminds us that nothing can separate us from God's love. Even death can't get in the way of that love for us. The love of Christ for each and every one of us is absolutely unbreakable. So where is our faith when life punches us in the face? We may be knocked down, but ultimately may we never be knocked out. Amen. Let's bow our heads to pray. This is the famous uh, Breton fisherman's prayer. Dear Lord, be good to us. The sea is so large and our boat is so small. Amen. So whether it's in stormy weather or whether all is plain sailing for us at the moment, let us renew our faith and trust in God. Please stand for the affirmation of our faith on page 5. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? We believe and trust in Him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in Him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now please sit for our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. You every morning is the love, our awakening and uprising proof. Lord, we thank you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. For life itself, for the time we have on earth, for the people we meet, for all your gifts, especially for those moments when we feel your presence around us. Lord, help us to appreciate the gifts you have given us and to use them in your service. To understand that in our everyday lives we can use them through the help of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. As we think about this parish and diocese, we ask for your blessing on all who work with us and for us, clergy and lay readers, music makers, and youth workers. We ask for vision in our planning, wisdom in our actions, and power in our witness. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We continue to pray for peace, especially at this time of tension between Russia and Ukraine for time to work with other nations 
to avoid more conflict. When we are confronted with danger, we need you to guide and steer us to safety. Bless and guide Elizabeth our Queen, give wisdom to all in authority, and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace. Lord, in your mercy, give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Today we remember all those who have suffered following the storms of the past week. We remember those who are in pain, waiting for operations. Those who are hurt inside or feel unloved. And any who are facing death in fear or loneliness. In the family of the church, we remember Angeline, Jane Yarnold, Carolyn Stewart, and Margaret. And in a moment of stillness, we think of those who we want to remember ourselves. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. May Christ, the morning star which never sets, who came back from the dead, shed his peaceful light on all humanity. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Among the departed we remember Father John Bradford and John Upton. In anniversary of death we remember Selina Hopkins and Monica Coggan. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Michael, St. Alphage, St. Helen, and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And please stand for the peace. In the middle of the storm, Jesus stood up in the boat and said to the wind to stop and the waves, Peace be still. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. There's not one other gesture of peace. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and have praise. Lord of all life, you created the universe where all living things reflect your glory. You give us this great and beautiful earth to discover and to cherish. And now we give you thanks because you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Christ. You made us all, each wonderfully different, to join with the angels and to sing your praise.
near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. Stand as we prepare to receive the body of God. The body of Christ. Amen. Amen.
feet and his disciples on the lake and the storm and then John Stephen calling the storm. Um, so we decided to make our own boat and see how they would fare on the, the, the lake and then we put lots of pennies on the boat to see which one would survive. And so Emily's got the results. And so Dexter got 10 pennies, Darcy got 40, Molly got 23, and I got 100. (laughs) (laughs) The the flat bottom boat (laughs) won. Brilliant, so fantastic on regard in there, brilliant. And um, much more exciting version of the gospel than they just have me. <laughs> Thank you, that's lovely. And um, Meryl, please, any other notices? venues on different days. So if you would like to go to any of the Lent courses, they're all, sorry, if you would like to go to the Lent course, they're all on the same subject, but they are on different days at different venues. Um, If you would like to sign the list outside, and if you want to go somewhere other than St. Michael's, could you just put out which day you would like to go, and, and we can easily send on that information to uh, St. Helens or St. Helens. Thank you very much. Suzette. Morning, everyone. Morning. Really good to be here and worship with you this morning. Um, yes, I mean, late, of course, I'll get to my bit about that in a minute, but I just want to share with you a couple of minutes of what I'm doing in my work in general. and. Um, Wellbeing Wednesday reached 40 weeks this week. Um, what I tend to do is we plan in 10 weeks at a time because my fear is that if we have it unending and then somebody turns up the week after the group's decided they don't want to week anymore, I, I would be mortified if someone turned up and we weren't there. So we plan in 10 weeks at a time. Obviously it's not, not going to be very good for somebody's wellbeing if they turn up for a group and it's not there. So we plan in 10 weeks at a time. We have made an exception. We plan another 12 weeks in so that we will have been going a year, and we're hoping to do some kind of celebration on that. And if everyone came at the moment, we would outgrow the coffee shop. Um, So it's good that we've got a good group going, and it's good that we uh, we meet every Wednesday. We haven't had a break, we just, we we keep going, because people's wellbeing is always there. People always need to be mingling with people. Uh, But like I say, if everybody came at the moment, we wouldn't fit in the coffee shop. Uh, But they don't all tend to come at the same time. So we'll we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. It's a good problem to have. And on the back of that, um, I'm actually uh, doing a Lent course called Wellbeing and Lent. Um, It's different to the parish one, but it's run alongside those. So anybody is welcome to come to it. And it's aimed at non-Christians as well as Christians. Um, Because Wellbeing and Lent, to me, there are themes in Lent that link with Wellbeing. And that's the, the intention that I'm going to be doing over the six weeks. So anybody is welcome to come along to that. I would ask that if you do come along to it, do let me know that you're coming, just so that I can provide the right amount of uh, input, you know, paperwork and things like that. But anyone is welcome. And I had a lovely chat with the manager of the uh, Greville Arms, because we'll actually be meeting in the Greville Arms. And I had a lovely chat with her the other day about Lent. And it's interesting how many times people who have nothing to do with church, and as far as I know, don't believe in God, but they will observe Lent in some way. So I just encourage you, you know, if you are doing something for Lent, don't keep it to yourself. You know, there may be someone around you who is actually doing something for Lent but doesn't actually realise what they're doing or why they're doing it. Um, so, yeah, so that's just a little bit about what I'm doing at the moment. The well-being and Lent thing is quite all-consuming at the moment because I'm actually writing the course myself. So, <laughs> so that is actually uh, taking up a lot of my time. Any questions? It's on a Monday morning, yes, and I have said if people uh, if people don't, don't can't come on a Monday morning, do let me know because I am willing to run another group. Okay, so don't let the, the day and the time put you off. All right, thanks for your time. Thank you. 
saying about the length course. Um, I want to commend it to you. Um, David Wesley and I are leading the Tuesday afternoon group and it starts on the 8th of March and it's at Oak Cottage Chapel. I notice there's a number of people already signed up so that's great but we can accommodate a reasonable number in safety and security in, in, in the chapel. So I would commend it to you. Um, You'll notice if you read the blurb that there isn't actually a book. It's um, the, the material is online. Don't be put off by that because we can supply you with the paper copies if you would like. So I don't want that to be a, an obstacle to to come. Um, there is also one on Tuesday evening. I'm not quite sure about the time on that. I imagine it will be sort of seven thirty time. But that's Tuesday evening as well. Again, in the chapel. I commend you to, if you've got any questions, David's there, I'm here, just have a word, we will answer every question that you could possibly throw at us. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Thank you all. Uh, I Andrew, you. can I just mention, just a thought, would you like to come on? Would you like to come and say a few words about us to explore? Good notice is these, I don't have to do anything. What do you talk about? Just to Alongside all these learned things, we've got Just Explore, which is um, an instruction course, as I think you know, many of you have been on it. So we're trying to get that going. If you know anybody who would like to come on into the retail here, we're starting on the 2nd of March. Um, it's not instead of event, it's, um, it's particularly for people who are trying to get themselves into faith and, and, and feeling about the faith themselves. Also, at this time of year, it's um, electoral roll time. Electoral roll is a sort of list of all the members of our church, people who like to play a full part in the church. I think most of you are on it. Could you have a look at the list outside with your details and correct it if um, it's not correct? And if you'd um, like to, not only that troll, would like to go on it, then please fill in the form that's out there. Thank you. Um, with regards to the electoral world, it would help very much if, if everything were correct, if you could just mark at the side and tickle something, otherwise we won't know whether or not you've seen it. That's very practical. Um, we have forms for nomination for the DCC, with our AGM coming up soon. Um, Keith and I and lots of other members of the church will be very, very happy to propose and second anybody who feels that they would like to join the District Church Council, which is a very, very important part of the church. Um, you may have noticed that um, during intercessions, John Upton was mentioned, and you may not know that that he is Angela Callahan's brother, who sadly died. Um, Angela is, of course, away in Tenerife. She's due back on the 3rd of March, but his funeral and memorial service will have taken place by then. She's actually able to join the memorial service by Zoom. But it was just in case you didn't know who John Hopkins was. And I think that that's it, apart from thank you, Bruce, thank you, Roger, um, thank you, everybody, for coming. Stand as we receive God's blessing. So may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. 
Amen.